respected listeners, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yet again making us go through a most blessed month of Ramadan, which is almost leaving us today back home, India, Pakistan, they call Jumatul Bida. The last Friday or the Friday saying goodbye to the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in the verses of Ramadan says about Ramadan, ayyamam ma'adudat, fixed number of days of fasting, limited number of days of fasting. But well respected listeners, the days of fasting were not just fixed or limited, so are our lives. Allah has given us a limited amount of life to live in this world. Not only limited amount of life, Imam Ibn Jawzi rahmatullah says, every breath a person takes is a step closer to his death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our recitation, taraweeh, the du'as. It's amazing how we found our inner, our inner selves, our inner selves in the month of Ramadan. The hidden treasures that have come out, Allahu Akbar. What capabilities Allah has given us, respected listeners. For the last 23, 24, 25 days, we've been fasting day in and day out. No easy task by any means. And we display to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the strength Allah gave us, controlling our eyes, controlling our tongues, controlling our ears, controlling our hearts from evil thoughts controlling our hands from the very addictive social media too, alhamdulillah. This is amazing respected listeners. This month of Ramadan came to change our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq, ability to make this a turning point in our lives. We do not know how many more Ramadans are left respected listeners. Life is only becoming tougher by the day. Tougher in the sense from the fitnas and trials that are coming to the Muslim Ummah and to each individual of us too, from individual level to a level of the Ummah, trials and tribulations. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has showed us a way to get out of these trials has showed us a way to protect ourselves from the trials and tribulations. Fasting came, as-siyamu jannatum ma lam yakhrukha. Fasting is a protective shield for a believer, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It protected us, protected our eyes, protected our tongues, our ears, our organs of the body. But now the month of Ramadan is leaving. We still need protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides that protection through the Quran. Quran, Utluma Kitabiya, Utluma, Utluma Kitabu Uhiya Ilaik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in Suratul Kahf, all of us respected listeners, today from this Juma, inshallah, myself and all of us should take this out into our lives every Friday, every Juma. Recite Surah Al-Kahf, respected listeners. Take some time out. It starts in the middle of the 15th Jews, approximately ends in the beginning of the 16th Jews. Doesn't take more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending upon our, upon our pace and speed. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf, on a Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevent, will save him, protect him or her from the trials and tribulations for the next eight days. And whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf 
on a Juma, on a Friday, Prophet wasallam said, Allah will put light in his heart. From that light, he will see on the day of judgment, on the dark day of judgment, Allah will make him see as far as from the place of his recitation until Makkatul Mukarrama. And that light, respected listeners, that light Allah will put in our hearts, the same light which he put in the, in the, in the hearts of the youth of the cave on whom the surah is named Al-Kahf, the cave, the protection, the cave protects a person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu sought protection in the cave when they hid from the enemies. Allah has given us this surah to protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four stories in Surah al kahf The story of the youth, the story of two, two, two friends, one very rich, one poor. The story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam and Khizr alayhi salam. And the story of Dhul Qarnayn, the mighty yet noble king, a pious king. Those stories of the past, but they're as relevant today as they were in the past. The story of the cave, the story of the youth, when the youth had everything they wanted in the world. They had money, they had wealth, they had fame, they were living in a palace. Everything was at, at the beck and call, but they accepted Allah as one God. And the king of the time, who called himself God, he called them up and he asked them, who do you worship when he heard they worship someone else? He asked them, who do you worship as your Lord? And the answer they gave respected listeners should be the answer of us and especially our children, our youth in the times we are living in, in the environment we are living in, when everything calls towards materialism, when everything calls to seeing is believing, the story of the youth in the cave reminds us of the belief in the unseen, of the unseen help of Allah present, that money or power cannot do anything. The position or the status cannot do anything. It is Allah's commands, it is Allah's help, it is Allah's obedience that does everything to us in our lives. That is what the youth stood up. When the king asked, who do you worship? The youth, unanimously, they said, Rabbuna Rabbu Samawati wal Arv, Lannad'uwa min dunihi ilaha. Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We do not worship anyone except that Lord. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى وَرَبَّتُنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ These were young men, Allah says. These were young men. And when they had faith, when they stood with their faith, Allah increased them in their guidance. And this is a message for all of us, respected listeners. When we stand firm to our faith, to our Iman, and we encourage our children to stand firm on our faith, Allah will increase us in guidance. Overnight, they left their caves because of the threat to their lives by the king. They left, they left their palace and they went to the cave. They went to the protection of the cave, inside the protection of the cave. And when they were gone, they made the dua to Allah. And this dua, this prayer, respected listeners, should be on our tongues every day. And we should teach this dua to our children. Rabbana. Atina min ladunka rahma wa hayi'lana min amrina rashada. O Allah, O our Lord, bless us with your mercy, O Allah. We beseech you, O Allah. We are not deserving of this, O Allah, but you cover us with your mercy, O Allah. You grant us your mercy, O Allah. Wa hayi'lana min amrina rashada and correct our, all our affairs, O oh Allah. Correct all our affairs, O oh Allah. Every day in our lives, respected listeners. 
lot of times you are struggling to make decisions. Which school do I go to? Which college I apply to? Which job do I select? Which interview do I go to? Which house should I buy? Where should I buy? All these decisions, who should I marry? What should I name my kids? Every decision we make, Allah says through this dua, Allah will put a light in our hearts to make the correct decisions, to make our affairs straight. It is not just to recite Surah Al-Kahf, because the messages that are present in Surah Al-Kahf are profound for our everyday life. When they went to the cave, tired, exhausted, about to go to sleep, had no idea what they were getting into. Because they stood firm in their faith. Allah wanted them to make an example until the day of judgment. Allah made them sleep for 300 years. 300 years. And this is the story in the Quran. Three hundred years, the clock was running outside the cave, but Allah stopped the clock inside the cave. Allah stopped the clock inside the cave. Three hundred years passed. The king changed, the people changed, the city changed, the fashions changed, the language changed, everything changed in three hundred years. They woke up. How long did we sleep? One of the mass. He said, Yeoman, maybe a day. The other one says, No, maybe part of a day. Maybe a few hours. Imagine waking up after 300 years, even though the Allah stopped clock on them. I drove last week to Nevada, to Reno. For a half an hour meeting, I had to drive and come back to make it to the iftar. I drove 10 hours with a 45 minutes break in between. For the next day, my whole body was tired. My muscles were tired. I couldn't walk properly. Just sitting in one place for about 10 hours. Imagine sleeping for 300 years. When they woke up, the hunger they had, one of them said, فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِخْتُكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ فَلْيَنْذُرُ أَيُّهَا أَسْكَاةَ تَعَمًا فَلْيَأْتُمْ بِرِزْقِ مِنْهُ وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ One of you, one of us goes and buys halal food, Allah. Young man, in that extreme hunger, the desire to eat only halal. A message to all of our youth, respected listeners, to all of us. Eat pure halal food. It's a trial, it's a tribulation in this day and age for our young people. And he says, don't keep low profile. When you go get the food, don't talk too much to the storekeeper. We don't want anyone to find out, find out about us. Because they thought the king is still looking for them. The person goes with his silver coin. A coin which had a seal and stamp of a king 300 years ago. He buys bread and food and gives the coin to the storekeeper. The storekeeper says, are you kidding me? Is this some kind of a joke? He says, what do you mean? You're giving me a coin 300 years ago. He says, what do you mean? Well, this is a coin of 300. Did you find some treasure? You're hiding from us. A commotion develops. People gather around him. And the word reaches the king. The king comes because the legend grows. They find out that these are the youth who left the palace 300 years ago. The king comes. The young man has to tell the truth. He says, well, I have other my companions sleeping in the cave. He takes them. He says, stay outside. Goes inside, tells them he slept for 300 years. 
the king Allahu Akbar Ilamu anna Allah yuhil arda ba'da mawtiha Allah says no we will make the dead earth come alive if Allah can make the dead earth come alive Allah can make the human beings created from the earth come alive respected listeners on the day of judgment in the grave was da'du tis'a the mufassirin said they live for nine more years after that the king builds a mausoleum a mosque masjid at the cave in honor of them and the entire city accepts islam because of the youth who stood firm on their faith the next story about two two friends one rich one poor the rich person talking about the money the wealth he has that wealth can do everything i can do anything i want to overnight his wealth is gone because it's allah who gives the wealth the wealth is a trust from allah in whom in which is the right of the person who has the wealth and the right of others in that wealth he has and the story of musa alayhi salam and khizr alayhi salam this is the age of knowledge respected listeners explosion of information and knowledge i know it don't tell me i know it i know everything musa alayhi salam allah taught musa alayhi salam someone else who knows more than you humble yourself and he humbled and allah raised him more musa alayhi salam and the fourth story about Zulkarnain, the mighty and noble and pious, righteous king. He knew he was Zulkarnain, but he knew there was someone else known as Zul Jalali wal Ikaran. <laughs> MashaAllah. If you look at the political scene today, the power of greed, the, the greed for power. The human nature has which Allah is telling us to curb, crush that ego, that greed for power and position and fame and status. Crush that nafs through this fasting. Suppress those desires. Uplift your soul with this fasting. 82 years old, he still wants to become the president of the United States. 79 years old. The greed for power respected. Listen, this is real. And we are seeing it. These stories are, are as, as relevant today. And they will be as relevant in the future as they were when the Quran was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why we recite Surah Al-Kahf. In fact, respected listeners, encourage each one of us, especially our children. All of us should make this intention today. Every day, O oh Allah, allow me to recite the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf or the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. Prophet wasallam said, whoever recites the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf every day or the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, Allah will save him or her from, a, from such trial, from all trials and tribulations. Even the Jal comes, even the Antichrist, the Jal comes. Allah will save him or her from the trial of the Jal. What are the trials of the Jal? Prophet ﷺ said, Humanity, humanity has never seen any trials from the Adam salam until the last person, like they will see when the Jal will come. Allah will save them from those kind of trials. If Allah can save us from those kind of trials, for just reciting the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf or the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, can you imagine, respected listeners, the trials and tribulations we are going through in our everyday life? Allah will protect us. Allah will take us out from them. Even if the trials and tribulations are not gone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put light in our hearts. Allah will give us strength. Allah will give us endurance to face those trials and tribulations with dignity and our head held high with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being patient at the same time this is the month of du'as respected listeners the nights blessed nights of Laylatul Qadr are the nights of du'as nights of reciting Quran 
nights of praying extra salat, nights to do dhikr. Every day, these five days remaining, respected listeners. Maybe four days remain. Take time out. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Or increase our time. Every four or five days remain. Sitting in a corner, isolation. Raising our hands, oh Allah. Talk to Allah, respected listeners. Have conversation with Allah. Allah loves it. Not like, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fil akhirati hasanatum. Allah will reward us for that. But talking to Allah, begging Allah, beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nuh alayhi salam. Read Surah Nuh in the Quran. Entire Surah, two pages, he talks to Allah. Oh Allah, I call people in public. I call them in private. Oh Allah. I call them in the daytime, in the nighttime. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِهِ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتِ وَنَهَارًا مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا Oh Allah, I called them, told them Allah will forgive you. If you seek forgiveness from Allah, Allah will send abundant blessings upon you. Allah will bless you in your children. Allah will bless you in your wealth. What is the matter with you? You do not have any confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he returned from Taif, being stoned, Oh Allah, the most merciful of all those who show mercy, the Lord of the weak, you're my Lord, O oh Allah, to whom I have come to, O oh Allah. Such pe people such show, showing such hostility, enemy who have power over me. If you're not upset at me, O oh Allah, I don't care about anyone else, oh Allah. Bless me with your light, which illuminates the heavens and the earth, dispels the darkness, oh Allah. There is no power or strength except you, in oh Allah. Talking to Allah, respected listeners. Oh Allah, you blessed me with Ramadan. You blessed me with so many bounties of which I don't deserve, oh Allah. You allowed me to fast, my family, oh Allah. So much you're giving us, O oh Allah. Look at the people in Gaza, O oh Allah. How are they living? Am I I'm being so blessed? Have this conversation with Allah, respected listeners. For 11 months, 11 months outside the month of Ramadan, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive us. We had lost connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of it. Allah blessed us with the month of Ramadan to regain that connection, to reconnect with Allah. Like if you've seen someone outside and you know the face, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam, you walk away. But if you've seen someone, you haven't seen them for nine months, 11 months. Brother, how are you? How's, your, how's everything? How's your family? How are your kids? Haven't seen you in a while. You start a conversation with them. That's how we start conversation with Allah, respected listeners. Allah, in the middle of the verses of Ramadan, says, When a servant asks about me, tell them, O Prophet of Allah, tell them I'm very near to them. When they ask, I will respond. I will give it to them. Sometimes I give them quickly. These are the words of the hadith of Prophet. Sometimes I give them immediately or quickly. Sometimes I delayed giving them. Not that I have scarcity in my treasures because Allah is Al-Hakim. Allah is wise. Allah knows when these things are good for that person. Or sometimes Allah removes calamity, affliction coming, that per coming the way of that person. From certain duas he had made had no connection with the affliction and calamity. But because of the duas he or she had made, that the tremendous affliction or calamity that was coming his way, maybe in the form of an accident, maybe in the form of a serious disease, Allah has removed because of the du'as of the person. Because the person has made the du'a, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will take the du'a, doesn't give him or her anything in this world. Allah deposits the du'a on the day of judgment. Allah will ask the person, did you ask me you're going through hard times? Allah will say, of course I did, O oh Allah. He will be seeing the screen playing in front of him. Look here, look at this, O oh Allah. 
Allah says, I know what you are going through. I know the sadness and sorrow you are going through. But look at the reward I have prepared for you. And the rewards in this world, respected listeners, are going to end when our life ends. Everything is going to end when our life ends. But the rewards Allah preserves for us, for the du'as we have made, the person will say, Rasulullah said, the person will wish that none of his du'as were accepted. We should never despair. As long as a person's eating is halal, as long as a person's earning is halal, Rasulullah said, Allah will respond and accept to every du'a of the person. Jibreel is coming, respected listeners. He might be coming in the remaining nights. Who knows? Allah knows. Who is Jibreel? Allah. Who is Jibreel? He was there when Allah put the spirit in Adam. He was there when shaitan was kicked out of paradise. He was there to put Ibrahim make the garden in a tremendous fire. He was there to put the qawm of Lut turn them upside down. He was there present to give glad tidings to Maryam alayhi salam at the birth of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He was there to give Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jibreel Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tanz inna anzallahum inna anzallahum fi laylatil qadr laylatul qadri khayrun min alfi shahr تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحِ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ That ruh, that spirit coming to give strength to our hearts, respected listeners. We should await for him. Staying up late in the night, especially at least a couple of hours before suhoor, raising our hands, or praying salah, or doing dhikr, or making dua to Allah. Because when does he descend, nobody knows. Which night, what time? But Allah has given us the hint in the Quran that He will be there until Fajr time. Salamun hiya hatta matla'il Fajr. He will be there until Fajr time to give us glad tidings, salams, peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us among those respected listeners. May Allah accept our month of Ramadan. May Allah bless us with the night of Laylul Khadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this month of Ramadan a means to change our lives for the remainder of